Thank you. Welcome to our channel. I think this focus on values is very useful. We haven't discussed that very much. We, uh, I think, uh, uh, we don't have common values, but in fact, uh, divergent values, and perhaps that is the basis uh, for the challenges that we have going forward. Now I come to uh, Mr. Nan. Thank you, um, Ajahn Titinan. First, I must thank Ajahn Titinan for having the courage to invite me to this forum. <laughs> I appreciate his adherence to academic principle of open and balanced discussions, essential to any democracy, Thai style or not. This is the first time I speak in public since the coup of May 22nd. The organizers may be a little nervous, which is understandable. However, I can assure Ajahn A and all of you that I do not plan to spend another six nights and seven days in the army barracks. So I'll be careful with my comments. And in the event that I'm invited, quote unquote, invited by the military again, this time around, I'm taking Ajahn Panitan with me. <laughs> For the topic today, I have to again emphasize what I think Ajahn Kotom and Ajahn Sujit. I have always been that student. responsible for what you say. <laughs> but I always have been your student reading and discussing. Um, both of you actually, I read Ajahn Sujit since I was in college, so I still adhere to what he believes in democracy. I think it is vital, vital and I think this has, this cannot be emphasized enough. It is vital to have this kind of forums organized all over the country. It has to be done openly, as much as many forums as possible. It must be encouraged by the government, academic institutions, the media, and even at the community level. It cannot be only contained in the National Reform Council, which we appointed this weekend. As for the issues that will be debated, it is good and well that NPCO, National Council for Peace and Order, have designated the areas for reform. And there's no denial that education, healthcare, energy, the media and the economy are not important. And many aspects need, certainly needed to be addressed. But for me, I think I agree with both my professors that before we jump into those discussing the details of those topics in the coming months, there are a few words of caution. First, many of the issues that are designated are ones that have been debated before. It's not new. There have always been mechanisms to build platforms and consensus through platforms of political parties or national economic and social development plans. During the democratic periods, especially after the 1997 constitution, mechanisms exist for the political agenda to be integrated to those of the bureaucrats. Development and reform is a continuous process. It may never be stopped, and it cannot be completed overnight. It is a myth of propaganda up to how you view it. That one group of people are the intelligentsia, the know-all, the good person that is superior to lead the reform. Effective reform needs to be inclusive and participatory, a democratic process. True, past mechanisms may have its faults, but you don't throw the baby out of with the bad water. Well, you already have. If you already have thrown it out, we must then pick the, him or her up. Prejudging from the people who will be assigned to work on the reform agenda, the various fields, I think one could safely predict that it would look, look like somewhat like the National Economic and Social Development Plan and the Ministerial Implementation Plans of the Technocrats that business and NGO alliance dominating the present regime. That means you probably can flip through the present 11 national economy and social development plan and choose and pick what to rewrite. I'm not saying that's not good. 
I myself once was a technocrat working at NDSDB, drafting up the six plan years ago. And when I was in the cabinet in 2005, was involved in the process of drafting the 10th national plan. But I think these might not be the underlying issues that the nation really need to work upon at the moment. My other point that I would like to express is that all the reform jigsaws, 11 of them, I understand, if they are drafted up, we would have been put together in a complete way that will really resolve the nation's woes. Or will it be just a shopping list, wish list of those involved, a utopian dream that can never be realized? Or all of these are just to distract the public from the real intentions of the present regime? For instance, and this is a good thing that the regime, this is one good thing. I don't agree with the coup, but maybe there are things that a democratic government cannot do, or maybe it can. Maybe it can. For example, what the present government is trying to crack down on the mafia activities, you know, jet ski mafia, motorcycles mafia, whatever. I fully support that. But those are practically the issues of the police and the security forces. They already have the duty to maintain that law and order under any form of government, democratic or not, that is if they choose to do it. So the question is, are we going to spend the next year debating on development issues and not address the real undercurrents and the, cause, the root cause of the problems of the conflicts in the past? I think what I'm trying to say here I usually speak more, but because I have to care careful with my words, I have to stick to what I written last night. Uh, I'm trying to say is that I have to is to draft if that if we are going to draft up any plans or any roadmaps for the future, there must be certain assumptions or maybe what Ajahn Koto was talking about values that the nation has to be agreed upon, a direction maybe, of where we all want to see the nation heading. Because this will define the new, the new future of all ties. Many may explain that this will be discussed in the political for, uh, reform commission or committee. But I believe that's not enough. Besides, I fear that the political reform people will start to jump into designing election mechanisms and other related factors. And, they don't, they, and this has been a never-ending trial and error part that Thailand has taken for the past 82 years. And it ended up leading, apologize to Dr. Sujit and Dr. Khotu, who has been involved in this process so many times. It has been leading us back to this vicious circle of coup, counter coups, and elections time and time again. So I agree with, with Ajahn Khotom that we need to think about values and we need to find and agree upon maybe new social contract. But the values we have, we, whatever we discuss, first we have to agree that an, I'm saddened to say, because after 82 years, we still have to say this, that democracy is the best system that is to guarantee the rights and liberties of all. This cannot be emphasized enough, especially in this atmosphere. Humans are not born equal, but they must be provided with the right environment and equal opportunity to grow and prosper in accordance to their wishes and dreams. Many have argued for political stability, and some even at the cost of freedom. I agree that political stability is certainly a condition for sustainable economic development and national development. But democracy is the essential factor to ensure that fair and equal opportunity exists in that economic growth. Stability will follow if people trust the system, 
that the system protects and guarantees their basic rights and liberties. How can Thai democracy develop and progress to create equality and liberty without alienation that brought about the conflicts in the past and probably will bring about conflicts in the future if we cannot resolve this? That finally, and finally people fed up resorting to coup d'etats or violence in the streets as we have experienced in the past decade. How can we permanently break the vicious cycle that I was talking about, which has been the phenomenon of Thai politics since 1932, when many other countries have broken it? For example, South Korea. So specifically, what needs to be done? I would like to say that what needs to also be done so that one does not have to resort, resort to military coup or give the military an excuse to take power when the democratic process seems to fail or reach a stalemate. I'm going to go with my professors to say that I don't have all the answers. And I would like to suggest that maybe we have to concentrate on just a few values or a few ways to do things. And I think inclusiveness is the key word. I think the Thai political structure of the past alienates more than draw groups to participate. And once it alienates, trust falters. Of course, in a democracy, majority does rule. But I accept that, and I'm a student that believe that minority rights must also be respected. But at the same time, as all the political scientists, political economists of the world have always been has cautioned against, not only the tyranny of the majority, but the tyranny of the minority, which disregard the rule of law and the framework of a working democracy. In more advanced pluralistic democracy, majority and minority shifts in accordance with the issues defined. Education will define one line, healthcare the other line. Alliances formed and compromises made, trade-offs are normal, and which, when new issues arise, new lines are drawn. But somehow for, the, for Thailand in the past, it has been more a face-off between us and them. And when you start saying us and them, it becomes the politics of extremes, which take center stage mainstream and common citizens who are the majority of the people are caught in the middle and it become a lose-lose game. No one wins. Why has Thailand not become a really, really pluralistic democracy like the Western democracy? I agree with my professors too that I think the root cause lies in the strong patronage system which we inherited. It is us against them because it is a struggle to control the wealth and to wield out that wealth, to divide up the cake, if you may. Politics is fighting to be the patron, to build favors, to build barami, which becomes the basis for more wealth and power. The public or the client gets left with, gets left with the bone or whatever left over there is. The patent-client relationship in this country is stronger at all levels and it is stronger than the merit system and thus it is the root cause that destroys the democratic framework and rule of law. Patronage over merit also breeds corruption. This becomes the society of who you know and what, not what you know. And this goes for both democratically elected ones and non-democratically elected ones. 
it has been the culture of this society for too long and this need to change we cannot move ahead if the merit fails and falls in second place to patronage the world is judged upon ability and the nation has to be built by capable people so I agree that we need to build a new political culture new national value that requires more than just putting people in a room and writing up the constitution Thailand has drafted so many constitutions that you probably can just pick one up and amend a few points here and there and put it to use I always say that you know you can put Professor Bawansa Ajahn Mi Chai maybe put in Ajahn Sujin and Ajahn Ko Tomin there and you can probably write the constitution over the weekend in some hotel room but a strong democratic political education formal and informal must be institutionalized into culture I mean you probably said that okay when worse come to worse blame education again but this is important I would like to see a design of something like what the Germans did after World War II when their democracy failed their political education of democracy goes down to the grassroots level and build up to the politicians the bureaucrats the academics I'm glad that uh, Ajahn Sujit said there are good and bad politicians because in every sector there are good and bad people good academics, bad academics good bureaucrats, bad bureaucrats good military bad military good police and bad police so this new political culture has to be built across the board into every sector at the same time it's not going to be overnight as the professor says but it will be the beginning because at the end a true and sustainable political democratic political culture can be best developed by try and error and practice the learning curve of citizens is the best defense against patronage and abuses of power it will be slow, it will be painstaking and mistakes will be made as we made before by both individuals and the masses but there are no shortcuts that's why every time some few good men think they can interrupt the cycle of elections by being by saying that they are superior to dictate the terms they fail because people has to learn by themselves that who they elect is good and bad and that comes through elections years after years there's still bad American politicians around there's some good ones every society faces that we're not superior, we're just humans like the others so we have to learn and they do learn yes, there are always examples of bad local politicians but there are also examples and a growing good local politicians well educated need and they know to get elected they need to serve the people and they do there are stories you know when local people have their elected officials working they always check on the projects every day they check on the projects that they propose and their, lo their local politicians implement but when the technocrats or the bureaucrats went down and built projects the, the villagers says they don't care you know it's the bureaucrats job it's not their job so, you know, maybe Ajahn Sujit is right, that's, that's the balance. But this culture has to be learned. 
And in the end, how can we control the ambitions of humans? Has always been the three, four professors here has always been studied political science. I'm just a student, but I take their questions seriously. Do we trust anyone to be a benevolent dictatorship? They start off benevolent every time, and then power corrupts. Can a few good men and women decide better than the masses? That's one of the assumptions that I think a lot of people and a lot of academics in Thailand, or a lot of, I don't know, even people I meet, always, I'm American educated, and I think a lot of people are. You know. I don't believe that humans are angels. Everybody has a self-interest. I think the success of a lot of Western democracy, especially the American or some of the European ones, is that they recognize that human are self-interest animals. And they have to build a system, a culture, a structure that drives those self-interests towards common interests. I don't have the answer. But we may have to rethink that, you know, all ties are not good. And let's build from realistic assumptions. Maybe my years in politics has been too long and I've been so sarcastic. But, but still, in the end, a strong democracy is the best answer. It balances out self-interest and forge common directions. It is better in a democracy because the people can determine what they want and has more control, although not perfect. It would be worse when the bureaucracy hands out without the checks and balances for the public. Keep watching. The only other thing I would like to touch upon lightly, this is a subject that can be a topic that Ajahn Titinan can organize by itself. But I think we, when we talk about reform in Thailand and, and politics in Thailand, we have to not forget to look what is changing out in the world. And it's changing so fast. So another assumption that to keep in mind and to be the basis of what we're going to do about our country is have to think hard on what, on how can Thais live and survive in the 21st century in this changing world. What are the challenges and threats? Will there even be a na nation states at the end of the 21st century? Many international academics say that the metropolitan area, the cities will reign. Where's Bangkok comparing to other cities? We live in a dump. I just been back to New York and Tokyo. It improved tremendously, especially in New York. Anyone who has been in New York in the 80s, like I did, will not remember what New York was then. It's, to it's totally different, and it's advancing. Bangkok is where? How do we feed our people and their energy? That will probably have to be think and the assumptions made on where Thailand will position itself in the world and how Thais will have good quality of life in this divergent world. These are the things that I think we should think about before designing anything else. I think we have to agree upon, in conclusion, we have to agree upon what is the basis for the new social contract. And we cannot use rhetoric and old, old contracts or old models of the past generations. I will admit this in public for the first time. When I was Secretary General for Kun Ying La, towards the end, and this is my individual personal feeling, the model we used to run the government, we have to admit, was Thairaktai's model from Kun Taksin's first term. It was a decade-old model of running the country. 
it worked, it still works. But towards the end, I also feel that there have to be a re-evaluation. Re Prime Minister Ying Lap recognized that. That's a re-evaluation and a new model, a new development model, a new way to manage the country has to be thought out and, implement and maybe put to use because the world is changing so fast. A 10-year model might be out of date. A word of caution, and I, I may be, we'll discuss with Ajahn Panitan later on too, is that I'm afraid that this government is going to use a 25-year-old model, General Prem's model, which was successful. I was talking to Ajahn Sujit before the, the, the seminar. It was successful in that context, in that era. But if General Prayut is going to use that old model, political structure or economic development, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. I myself, as a student of NSDB, even think that economic and social development plans are not working mechanisms anymore. So, rethink a new direction. At the end, the best way to think the new direction is an open and public participation of all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Anand. Uh, your remarks are, uh, I think, uh, uh, clear, firm, and uh, even pensive. I mean, pensive. Uh, and you noted yourself that you know there was some uh, uh, some chance of uh, including you in this panel. I, I think that we. We need balance, so thank you for coming. Also, thank you for preparing the uh, written remarks, uh, which already had me concerned. But when, when you uh, went off the, the, the script, I got more concerned. Um, so th thanks very much. Uh, now, one thing that has emerged out of this uh, discussion is something I didn't think would, you know, I didn't anticipate, which is the focus on values and political culture. Political culture is something we study in political science, you know, forever. But more in the past, in recent years, political culture has not uh, uh, been that prominent in political science discourses. Uh, so it has been mentioned by all three speakers so far that patronage, patron-client networks, and in political science, sometimes we call it clientelism. Uh, clientelism, um, you know, doing favors and. Uh, uh, patron-client uh, cost-benefit trade-offs. Uh, this is something that maybe is a problem for us, but it's who we are. So if it's a problem for Thailand and Thai people, then we are really the, uh, our own enemy, uh, our own uh, challenge, our own opponent. And somehow, the next question I'll ask later on uh, is, what do we do about that? And how do we change if it's a problem? How do we make Thai society more merit-driven? You know, this continuum that we had a continuum between liberty and order, which reminds me a little bit of the Asian values debate 20 years ago. Too much liberty, not good. Too much order, not good. Dictatorship, um, anarchy. Now we have another continuum, which is between relationships or patronage, patron-client networks, and uh, merit, merits, merit-driven outcomes. And somehow we don't have a balance. I think here in this society, I think it's mostly relationships. And we need to have more merit built in, uh, into the system. Perhaps that's one way of, uh, of going forward. Now I come to Ajahn Panitan, my good friend. Uh, he is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the principal advisor of uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Defense Minister. He's been involved in government in the past. He's, he teaches international relations here. Uh, so Ajahn Panitan. Thank you, Ajahn Panitan. My good friend for more than 20 years. Ajahn Sujit, Dean Dean. Professor Sujit. Former, former Dean Ajahn Kothom Ajahn Suranan. I'm very glad to be here, although I'm quite perplexed by the situations, as always, that uh, the shift and changes are spinning us around uh, for so many years in the, in the decades. Uh, and after all, 20 years uh, uh, here, 
Ajahn Sujit is still very much confused between me and Titinan as ever. Uh, keep, uh, he is very consistent, but for sure. Uh, uh, he has been recruiting us uh, uh, 21 years ago, uh, but uh, he's also very instrumental in, in, in setting up ISIS with Professor Kusuma um, um, uh, in the beginning, and I was working with ISIS for a few years. And I still remember also that one day, uh, many years ago, before we had so many uh, uh, bosses, prime ministers. I've, I've served five prime ministers. Kunsurunan drove me. Uh, I think he came here to visit Professor Kusuma and drove me to lunch. And we had a long conversation without any security guards and uh, uh, convoys, uh, uh, just two of us driving around, uh, having the same conversation that he was having today. Uh, so you, can you imagine that I, I have to uh, uh, be very perplexed by the situation? Also, Ajahn Kotom and I have, have been very much uh, in a constant contact uh, during those turmoil uh, weeks. I remember Jan Kotom shared my concerns uh, very well before the killings that took place in 2011 and 2012. We were very much attempted to move people out you know, from Raja Pasong. And, uh, and these Jan Kotom can tell you that I'm very much aware uh, that uh, problems uh, could happen uh, in, in those uh, weeks. Then we, we share uh, so many uh, concerns. Of course, now the concern is that uh, um, uh, how the Thai society, how democracy can return uh, back to uh, to Thailand. Uh, um, some of us may see from from time to time uh, places that close for repair. I, I am not so sure that our democracy is close for repair because the fact that we are here today uh, suggests that uh, something is still open and working. Uh, although I'm sure that uh, Kun Surunan spent many days uh, uh, in the Mitri uh, 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 barrack, uh, it's not a good experience. I spent 70 more days when Kun Surunan friend drove me to the Mitri barracks uh, uh, a few years ago in 2011 and 2012. Uh, same conditions, uh, uh, same, uh, uh, same rooms, uh, uh, but uh, for more than two months that we had to uh, relocate it uh, to the CIS operation centers in uh, Regiment 11. Uh, uh, we hope that those situations will not return. Uh, uh, I think uh, this is why we are here today, uh, trying to uh, push Thailand uh, forward. Uh, I think my observations will be uh, three uh, observations. Uh, one is about the contest contest contestation between uh, different Thai characters and Thai political cultures. Uh, I'll touch on that. Or Thai you know, working forces uh, in in our society. Uh, that's that's my first uh, observation. I'll elaborate on that. Second, uh, three success uh, factors that could lead us uh, to a more democratic or a more stable society. Uh, one is, of course, uh, uh, factors dealing with security and stability. Uh, this is why this government is very concerned uh, with the, uh, uh, this uh, peace and stability. Uh, I'm sure you noticed that on Wednesday, a new integrated center has been set up uh, at the Defense Ministry and, uh, and operated by uh, all security units to uh, make sure that uh, we handle the security situations, both new and old, both traditional and non-traditional both political and other factors uh, in a very much in integrated fashion. Uh, and uh, we will respond and we will handle these uh, uh, stability and security issues in a much more, for the first time, integrated uh, fashion. Uh, second, of course, economy. Economic issues are very fundamental. You look at the, uh, uh, at the numbers. I'll come back to this uh, uh, just briefly. And last, of course, I will touch on a, a very specific reform issues. Uh, I'm not a reform man, I'm sure you know. Uh, uh, I have been working for more than 20 years on, 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 on security. And six years from retirement, I'm getting a little bit worried that uh, we are not able to uh, catch up uh, with uh, what we need to do as an academics and, and artists to push Thailand back to a normalcy. But we we'll try our best. Uh, uh, and this time, I think we have a chance. Uh, to, 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 to strike a much be better balance. Okay, first observation. When the coup took place on the 22nd of May, I'm sure you know this is not the first coup. This is the 13th successful 
school according to one account. But then again, there is a problem with counting these schools. Uh, uh, 17 to 26 schools and attempted schools. In fact, Ajahn Sujit is an expert on that. Uh, Ajahn Ek is also uh, works on something on this issue also. But uh, if you count that 26, uh, 17 to uh, 26 schools, uh, at least uh, um, 17 schools after World War II by Center for Systematic Peace, uh, that put Thailand in the fourth place in the world of countries having the most coup. Sudan being the first, Iraq being the second, Bolivia being in the third. But if you account all attempted coups, that may put Thailand on the second most uh, country that's prone to coup, you see. On the average, since 1932, Professor Sujit can tell you more. He has been writing, writing uh, on, on many uh, 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 studies on the coup. The, on the average, uh, uh, the coup t takes place every six years, on the average. Up until in the last 20 years, now the average extended to eight years. Something happened in the last 20 years. It's extended to, to, to eight years. But that's not the problem. The problem that I'm trying to raise is that what is it in the Thai political culture that allow this kind of uh, successive coups? And I may add, relatively peaceful uh, compared to Myanmar, you know, uh, falling behind Thailand, of course. Uh, I'm not sure you need to catch up, uh, but uh, falling behind, but much more, much more violence. Of course, if you look at Iraq, Sudan, I don't need to tell you, you are the experts. Why is it that the coups in Thailand are much more peaceful? Isn't it something very strange in the Thai political, political culture? Professor Suranan can tell you that if the red shirt people would like to oppose the coup, they can. I have talked to them. They can call up 100,000, 200,000 people on the streets in no time. They even demonstrated to our different people. My deputy secretary, uh, my deputy uh, prime minister, is in the south. They also demonstrated that if they arm themselves, they can fight very aggressively with the military in the south for 10 years. They can do that. They can do that with no doubt. You know. But the problem is, why is it they don't do that? There's something about Thai people and the military and the coup. Who are we to say? My former boss, Kunturanan Kassin, went to the Senate just a few days before the coup. Appeal to the Thai people that don't, don't, he said. And most embassies fail to catch up on that. I checked, I checked. Ambassadors, have you listened to former Prime Minister Pisic, one of the most important speeches in his life at the Senate, just a few days before the coup coming. I was on radio for three days, telling the Thai public that the coup is coming, the coup is coming, please, do something to stop it. You know, we have failed to tell the military to stop the coup. The Thai people may stop it, but no, no. They have listened to Kundapisit at the Senate, and they said, no, no, no. We don't prefer that third way. We don't prefer that alternative. We prefer a strong executive from the military or from the civilian in a very subtle way. Uh, this is my first point. Uh, who are we to tell? And, uh, the yellow shirt, the red shirts, the PDRCs, the many other competing forces about uh, their relationship with the military. The military knows that this is this time they are not against the pro-democratic forces. The pro-democratic forces, Pur Thai, Thai Rak Thai, and the Demo Democrat Party, they are fighting. The military is now seen as a third party, and people are supported them for the time being. And the military may know that. That support may be very well limited in terms of time and in terms of many other issues. So this is my first point. Uh, uh, you can debate more on what is it. I'm not going to uh, go deep into that, but it is intriguing to me. After all uh, of these years, the Thai people still look up to the military from time to time. Can we change it? Of course, we are trying to do that for uh, in the last few decades. Uh, should it be changed? Of course, the military rule, uh, 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 civilian control of, of, for the 
severe uh, control of the military uh, is very critical. But uh, that's one political culture that you need to explain, especially in terms of public support, uh, unlike many other countries. Uh, uh, secondly, of course, uh, my observation is that uh, in order to uh, move forward from that point, uh, you need to uh, make sure that uh, security, stability in a very complicated sense uh, can be handled. People would like to see peace on the street. People would like to see mafias out uh, from the uh, bus uh, the stops, uh, from the market. People would like to see their communities uh, being saved uh, without uh, dr drug traffickers. People would like to see their uh, foreign workers being handled much more effectively. People would like to, in a way, improve their human security, human personal issues. I think the military sense that and move very quickly in the first few uh, days after the coup to, to handle that. And of course, you look at the poll, the, the received, uh, uh, what's quite uh, uh, is strong on, on that uh, issue. Uh, I think that uh, security and stability uh, issue is also expanded into a non-traditional uh, security issues uh, in, in many areas stated already uh, in the uh, government uh, uh, policy announced to the National Legislative Assembly. Uh, those are the issues that have to be handled very quickly in the uh, first few weeks. And uh, the establishment of that center last Wednesday uh, concluded that kind of activities and uh, centralized it. And, 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 and I think it could lead to a more effective management of that. Uh, why? People need to be confident that this government can protect you, at least on the uh, daily basis. I think that's the most basic fundamental. Uh, they have seen uh, so many fightings, uh, uh, sadly, regrettably, the loss of lives in the last uh, uh, few years. Uh, they say no more for the time being. They want peace. I'm not so sure when the party is over and they return to fight. I'm not so sure when, but it's, it's, it's the job of this government. Secondly, the economy. Uh, in, within the last uh, uh, few weeks, you have seen so many uh, not so good numbers, exports, growth, investment, and you saw stimulant packages uh, being adopted uh, last week. Uh, it's very important uh, for uh, the economy to get going, although it's very difficult. You look at Europe, you look at the uh, 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 US, uh, you look at the Middle East crisis, uh, it's not going to be easy. But public spending uh, is maybe the key infrastructures, uh, big uh, uh, government uh, uh, investments, uh, uh, negotiations among various governments uh, uh, and, and, and ASEAN countries uh, uh, with Thailand uh, ongoing. Uh, Prime Minister uh, is on his way to visiting uh, a few uh, 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 neighboring countries uh, uh, and, and they will focus on this uh, uh, stimulate, stimulating the uh, economy by public you know, big projects uh, with Myanmar, uh, with uh, uh, Cambodia, with uh, Malaysia, the first three neighbors that are connected to Thailand and then the rest of ASEAN and others. Uh, so that is very important. Once you have, then again, the confidence of the people, uh, you can move uh, progressively on the roadmap after security, stability has been established, uh, economy is being handled within three to six months, then you could move to reform. And that reform is going to be very critical uh, for the return of uh, democracy. You notice that uh, this government moved quite quick, quickly. Uh, within two months, uh, they. Uh, created an interim con con constitution. I'm not an expert. I cannot create constitution in the hotel room, you know, uh, within the night. Uh, I'm sure others can do that, uh, uh, like Tunan suggested. But uh, they created uh, many uh, 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 structures that uh, transfer their power from the uh, um, military group uh, to the National Legislative Assembly with, with 20, uh, 220 people. You have about 105, 110 now with the new appointment of the military. Uh, on that, uh, you have cabinet being appointed, uh, 32, uh, um, 11, 32, uh, 32 altogether, 11 soldiers in that. Uh, and then 
natural reform council, very critical. Uh, you look at these structures, you immediately notice that the power is now moving away from uh, the uh, NCPO to the uh, more uh, civilian uh, mixed uh, uh, structures. Of course, this is still military influence dominated, but it has more civilian you know, uh, uh, competitions into it already. And the National Reform Council will be very, very critical uh, because it comprises of a younger uh, generation of, yeah, yes. of, of, your, your of generations. Uh, of you know of the people and more diverse uh, the average uh, the average uh, age of the uh, of the cabinet is 61 uh, years old uh, i think the average of the national reform council hopefully according to a chance with it will be much lower which more intense uh, 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 issues and uh, dynamics uh, in in the, in the composition uh, so that that is also uh, in the works uh, that's my second uh, 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 observation. The, the third observation is how are we going to go about it? Uh, yeah, you have somewhat able to manage security, stability, you manage now, somewhat uh, a transitional structures. Uh, some people may like it, some people may not like it. It's an average structure if you ask me. No one likes to be average. But this is an average structure. Uh, uh, for the first time in the Thai society, they have to come to terms with the average. Uh, every, everyone uh, uh, shared, uh, not extreme left, not extreme right, uh, right uh, not, not, not too progressive, not too uh, conservative. Uh, so in order to carry uh, the reforms uh, issues uh, successfully, um, it's going to be a, a challenge. Uh, as you know, uh, time is limited. Uh, and issues are more complicated. My sense is that uh, it's not only 11 uh, reform areas uh, in politics, in administration, in law, in local governance, in education, in uh, economic, in um, um, energy, in healthcare, in media, and in other social issues. I think there are more coming. Uh, when you look at these uh, different differences among these uh, 7,000 people who are picked, 250,000, uh, two, 250 people who are picked from the, uh, to be the members, and, and, and that list could, should be announced soon in the next few days. Um, it could be 11 plus other areas that uh, they are going to debate. But of course, the center of the area is political reform. You need to get this political structure uh, political reform, uh, uh, rules, uh, elections, check and balance in the system. Uh, soon after, you know, soon after you begin working uh, on that, in order to pave the way for other reforms to come uh, later on, if not uh, on time within a year, uh, maybe uh, once you settle down on the rules of the political rules and. And, and, and regulations, then you can have those elected uh, people moving into those areas. Uh, the problem is how to prioritize it, how to, number one, uh, pick on certain key issues on political uh, 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 rules, uh, election, yeah. parliamentary system, check and balance. Uh, but of course, these issues are debated very, very much intensely in the last uh, few years already. Uh, the, the trick is how to achieve a good balance between contesting forces. And uh, that is the trick, you see. Uh, yes, we have seen so many aggressive forces trying to push the system to be more open, to move back too far in the past. Uh, but the Thai people have the greatest sense of equilibrium. We need to recall that sense back. We need to push these uh, reformers to achieve that balance. In order to achieve that bar balance, I think they need to engage in the next few weeks more with the public. Regardless of who they are, uh, who you like, in order to be successful, a uh, public forum must be created. Public hearings must, must be uh, instituted must be created, they need to engage, they need to create stakeholders to engage those into working in these different areas to make sure that these stakeholders will carry on 
I'm not so sure in the end we could have a referendum on some of these uh, issues or not. But this issue will be forwarded from National Reform Council to the National Legislative Assembly to make it a law, to make, uh, and some of them to be forwarded to the uh, Constitutional Drafting Committee uh, to be included in the uh, constitu new constitution. So this engagement is very critical. It is very vital for institutions, uh, NGOs, you know, and other uh, uh, people's forums to engage with the National Reform Council, uh, regardless of you are a member or not. So that, that is very, very important to make sure that you achieve good balance. You have good check and, and balance, like I just did mention already. Uh, you push forward uh, a more resistant. You move away from the old political culture of pattern and climb. See, but how far? It's up to the reformers, not up to us. I'm not a member of that. Uh, uh, and then to make sure that you had the mutual influence, bureaucratic influence, in a much more balanced Thai way. And remember the Thais. They are very. They have a special relationship with the military. In fact, with the monarchy, with the military, with the bureaucracy, the way that you and I may not have. Although I'm a bureaucracy, I'm a civil servant, we always claim we are not a bureaucracy because we can say whatever we want to say. We have a complex syndrome, professors like us. But the Thai people don't. They're very clear who they love in this country, who they want to work with. But me, I have a big problem. I'm a civil servant, but I'm a professor also. I'm also working you know, uh, uh, for the government from time to time. But the Thai people don't. So it's important for the reformer to get engaged with the Thai people and push that uh, uh, balance. And I think good balance, uh, forwarding, forward looking on more system, uh, moving away from patronage, uh, handling military bureaucracy influence much more uh, effectively, uh, and participation, like Kunsurunan mentioned in, in in the end of, of his speech. Uh, participation will be the key. Uh, all of this, in the end, in short, will create public confidence, not only on public safety, personal safety, human security, not only on economy, but if you have enough uh, to create a good balance, the Thai people will have confidence enough with the new system, with the new structure. And in the end, they are the one who will tell us that they will support the new structure or not. The new structure, the new constitution, the new uh, uh, economy, the new society will be based on, I agree with uh, uh, many people, on the equilibrium, on the inclusiveness, but with the twist of the Thai characters that you and I may not share. We'll leave it to the Thai people to decide on that. Okay, that's my observation.